Hello SUV and BMW lovers. Today we have a model by Para 64. This I think is an older casting. I just got it because my brother actually owns this vehicle in the same color. Although I don't know if he got the one with these wheels or some of those other wheels. All right, let's see here. Para 64, I believe there's are their licensed models. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. It doesn't say anything about BMW there. Uh, oh, there it is. It's a big hologram with the uh, the different grills. That's interesting. Uh, look at that hologram shift between the vertical one to the horizontal one. Uh, two horizontal ones. I don't know. There's a lot of weird stuff going on. All right, so this is a right-hand drive, I guess. All right, uh, let's see. There's actually some sort of quality control sticker there. Oh, but it's taped together as well. So while I open this, I'm just reading Wikipedia. This uh, chassis code is the... G07 and this is their full-sized luxury SUV it's their largest SUV and it, this one started production in uh, 2018 model year 2019 and is still made today the engine choices would have been uh, 3 liter inline sixes either gas or diesel and they could have a turbocharger but the diesel could have even up to a quad turbocharger which is that unexpected you can get one turbo two turbos or four turbos on the diesel versions or if you want to go with petrol you can get up to a 4.4 liter uh, v twin turbo v8 all right uh doesn't say the horsepower so i apologize for that uh, i just don't care i guess i don't really care about suvs this thing weighs up to 2,460 kilos or 5,400 pounds. So that's a heavy, like that's that's like the weight of two cars, right? So that's why I don't like SUVs. I mean, unless you actually have like five children, I, I don't see a reason for people to be owning these things because no one's gonna go off-roading in a vehicle like this. Uh, I don't think so. But yeah, that's why mm, gas is, just getting sucked up, polluting the planet. All right, uh, let's get into this now. So the base, if you're curious, it has two studs to, I think, keep the tires from getting flat spotted. Although there you can see a little bit of fl a flat spot. And then it's got X7 printed on it nicely and this, the brand as well. All right, get that screw out of here. Let me remove, reshift the camera here to a better angle. Focus. Okay. Well, I don't. I think it's just a plain white paint. I don't think there's any metallic flake in it. It just looks white to me. I don't see any sparkles or anything. So looking at the wheels, yeah, that matches like the first photograph, the amount of spokes and all that stuff. Uh, you're not going to get brake systems on a Power 64, and that's fine, especially on a wheel like that. The spoke holes are so thin. Uh, in the hub of the wheel, though, you can see, hopefully, if I can focus, lug nut details. Uh, I don't know why my camera's gone so bad. All right, well, that's as guess I can do. Yeah, lug nut recesses, so that's pretty nice. All right, it looks like there's also some silver paint here, and I do see that on the photograph of the first photo, but on the side photo they're black, so I guess they're different trim options. I think I like the silver more. Uh, panel gaps, they're kind of, you know, dark on the edges because white paint from all die-cast companies have this problem. You know, white and yellow, they have a hard time covering stuff up, so you have to put a lot in or not a lot in and you'll show some of the dark casting behind the edges. I think I'd actually prefer it this way than to have all this, all, a bunch of paint filling in that gap. So it seems all right. Uh, let's see, door handles, they're okay enough. You got a little recess below and you know, they're sticking out primarily. What is this though? Some sort of gunk. Oh, good, I can get rid of it. The mirrors here, they're rigid plastic and it's interesting, it even has I think this is intentional, these two little things on the bottom. Maybe those are... Yeah, maybe not. I don't think they're intentional. Just look at the photographs. I thought for a second it might be a sensor that you see sometimes on mirrors. 
But I think this is just a molding flash. But it's actually equal on both sides, so eh, I'm just gonna leave it. Uh, there's a reflective sticker in there, so yeah, it literally is reflecting the toothpick. Okay, uh, I guess going around to the, to the front, we have the clear headlights. I'm just trying to see if there's anything back behind them. I don't really get the impression that there's a light bucket back there. Seems like it's just flat back there and painted silver. Uh, the, that circle though is the way it, the plastic has, has a pin and that's going into the casting. So that looks like a headlight. And there's something over here. It's hard to say. Hmm. Yeah, so I guess they're okay. At least they're plastic lenses, not paint. And then we have some black in these grills. Uh, these are casted in grills. This is some sort of sensor, I think. And then this grill here, I think, is plastic. And uh, painted silver. The grooves are actually there. I'm trying to think if these are plastic after all. This, I think this actually might be plastic. I take back the the cast it in. But this one, I don't know. I can't tell. It's weird. It's right in front of me, but I cannot tell. <clears throat> I guess that's good, though. It should be seamless. Should be. You shouldn't know what they're, they are. I'm just look at that BMW badge. Eh, I wouldn't say it's legible, but you definitely know it's a BMW badge, so it's pretty good. Uh, not too much orange peel. Uh, you can't expect super smooth paint on a, a mass-produced product like this. Uh, the wiper blades, yeah, they're raised. And then the blackout of this windshield, this seems to be on the back side, so that's nice. Okay, we have a standard black interior. These are screwed together, so I'll take this apart and we'll look at the interior later. Mm, what's going on with these panel caps? Not looking good. Oh, nice. Alright, that one went away. There's a lot of contaminants or something on this side. This is a contaminant, I think, maybe in the paint. If I'm lucky, I can polish it out. Oh, I apologize for the paint on my fingernails, making a model. Uh, didn't even notice this silver trim printed on this side. This silver is on the outside of the window, though. Where's the black? No, this is, uh, I think, on the outside of the window as well. So I guess it was just too hard for them to print on the inside surface. Uh, that's fine. We have the fuel filler on this side. These wheels and tires look okay. What I like about the Power 64s is you don't see giant tread blocks. You know, I don't know why other brands, they always show these knobby tires on street cars and stuff. But looking even at this SUV's photographs, you don't see any of the sidewall, t the knobbies, the tread. And that being the reasoning, it's actually a smooth tire, in case you haven't noticed. And that's fine by me. I don't care about tread so much. Okay, uh, boy, what's up with this? Some sort of is this glue goop? Mm. I don't know. It's probably the glue holding that red lens taillight, but I don't know if I can get it off. Well, maybe. Yeah, I think it just takes a little bit of time and effort. So that's good. So don't be deterred. Yeah, you can fix it. <clears throat> Alright, so yeah, the red the tail light is clear, translucent, and a little bit gluey. There's some silver printed on it, and not enough there. The badge back here looks okay again, and then it's nice to have something printed in the license plate. That possibly might be a decal, though. It's a little bit wrinkly. Panel gaps are right there. Oh, I don't remember. This was a split trunk. Interesting. Uh, what is up with this now? <laughs> oh, that's so gross. I don't even... What the heck would that be? It, it almost feels like polishing compound, but I'm pretty sure no one's polishing Power 64 models. They're not expensive enough. Uh, I gotta get a Q-tip. I gotta throw this one out. Hold on. Alright, so that's cleaned up this glue a little bit better as well. Um, <clears throat> one thing that's odd is why are these not painted silver? Uh, these exhausts are silver on the photographs. I'm pretty sure they would be ex silver on any X7 because it's literally hot air coming out of here. And it's weird that they would paint this silver, but not this area silver. So that's odd. And then also, you know, there's no black here in the exhaust recess either, but you can sharpie that in pretty easily. 
Okay, well, it's got some red for the reflectors there. That looks okay. And uh, rear wiper blades, kind of minuscule. Uh, but it looks like the photograph, so a little shark antenna there. And then we have the blackout up here uh, printed on the outside. And what's nice is, you know, you can see some of the interior because you have so much light getting in there. Looks like some cup holders. But, uh, let me open this up. Undercarriage details are decent enough if you care about that sort of stuff. Alright. <clears throat> Alright, it's interesting that they trap their axles. Uh, what is this? Uh, Master plastic mold flash again. Alright. So it's a plastic base in case you haven't picked up on that. That's fine by me. Lighter models cost less to ship. In fact, I really wish Power 64 just got away from this packaging. Because it's so heavy, it makes buying these things online more expensive. And sure, these are kind of sensitive, but uh, Tarmac Works, uh, they put, ship their stuff in cardboard small packages and they have mirrors too. So it can be done. All right, let's see. Got the good old molded details as one would expect. Yeah, rib details in the seats. I'm just looking at the construction of this thing. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, if I was smarter, I would have bought the steering wheel version on this side, but maybe it wasn't on sale, and that's why I didn't get it. So this is not exactly my brother's truck. So the windows are pressed heat, pressed, uh, there are those pins, okay. Got a bunch of locator pins for the, this thing. It's interesting, they would go through the trouble of having these pins and locating the, I guess maybe the way they assemble it at the factory is to do this. Uh, that's the only logical reason I can think of as to why they would even go through the trouble of having you know, those things in the first place, because it's extra plastic. Well, I gotta say, that was easy to put together, that's for sure. I gotta get a hand screwdriver. I'm afraid to use that electric drill, I think it'll strip out the tolls. Paint that interior. Uh, I think my brother's truck had a tan leather interior. I'll be back. Okay, so I did paint the interior, and I, I really wish Power 64 would just have some different plastics because it's so much easier to see a lighter colored interior. Anyways, here's a few other modern SUVs. Here's a Kyosho G Wagon. Yeah, I think this is a G55. It's an AMG G55, yeah. It's pretty small. That's an old old uh, SUV. Probably one of the very first luxury SUVs. That and the Range Rover. I don't know which came first. This is a uh, made by Xcar Toys. It's called a Tank 300. So this is a Chinese domestic market uh, truck that looks very much like a Bronco. And then. Uh, this last one, this is Tarmac Works, and uh, it's the Land Rover Defender 110, okay. So, yeah, Tarmac Works has rigid mirrors, or are these rubbery? No, uh, unless I just bent it. Actually, I think that might be a rubbery mirror, so maybe that's how they get away with uh, the smaller packaging. So, <coughs> well, <laughs> it bars, well, Kyosho's also came in little blister packs, and these are definitely rigid mirrors. Uh, this... X-Car Toys has what seem to be rigid mirrors, and this comes in a really small cardboard box, like TLV also. So, yeah, I really wish Power 64 just went to small cardboard boxes. Another reason, is with the big, these things, I don't pull out my models that come in these cases for comparison, because I don't have the space to have four of these plates spinning around. 
So you will never probably see this X7 again because I'm too lazy to pull it off of the base. I'm going to screw it back on that base and that'll be the end of it. But you know, these three you'll see you'll see in the future because they're not inside boxes. So All right, uh let's go with the more vert top view here. Get an idea. I mean, this is a full-size SUV. I don't think the other three are. So all in all, it's a nice model. No major defects that I could see. Maybe some paint was missing in the exhaust tips, but this was this model was uh, not very expensive when it was re at retail price, and I got it on sale, so that's why I picked it up. Uh, I do feel like maybe again it would be even cheaper if it didn't have such a giant plastic case. It's almost like this would be like a a ten dollar model, but two dollars of it are that plastic case, which I don't need. I go on and on about stuff like this, but uh, if no one complains, you're just gonna it's just gonna continue on. Alright, so if you don't like these giant plastic cases that you have to pay for and possibly end up in the trash bin and possibly ends up in your liver later, I suggest you leave comments. You know, anytime you see a review, start complaining because some of these uh, brands making these models actually do listen. Uh, Tarmac Works used to have the worst packaging whatsoever. They were like boxes that didn't even fit the model and then they're inside blister packs and stuff so they went to smaller packaging because they know shipping costs are expensive you know it's probably hurting their sales and i think that's probably the case with power 64 i'm sure many people don't buy them because you're buying all these expensive heavy boxes that cost a lot to ship all right i'm rambling i'll see you guys in the next uh, power 64 video bye